Hey, welcome to a different perspectives Sunday night edition special from a wonderful weekend. We're going to continue our sugar series, so let's get started. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, and welcome to this morning's, oh wait, I'm so used to saying it. <laughs> welcome to this evening's uh, Different Perspective. I am so excited you guys are here with me today. Yes, it's kind of, you know, normal for me to do a Saturday mornings, so it's not a joke, we are live. We are definitely live here uh, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Central Time. Hope you guys are doing great. Uh, yes, and the reason why we do it live, um, Brandon reminded me this week, because I said, oh my goodness, I'm gonna be gone on Saturday and Sunday, so we should pre-record it. And then Brandon says, hey, listen, it's kind of our tradition. Uh, even though we usually have Travis in here, obviously Travis is enjoying his wonderful weekend. Uh, Brandon's like, you know, traditional, we've always done the weekend of this, of hunting season, this time, every single year. And I said, well, do we wanna do it again? He's like, yeah, so it's like our third or fourth year in a row that we broadcast it uh, now on Sunday night just for the edition. So thanks for you guys all popping on. And for some reason, I always get a massive crowd on Sundays, even if I go live. Now that we're doing a show, it should be a pretty good audience today. Um, and like I said, it's great because the show gives us such a great reach to all you guys that are looking to get all the information. And we are continuing our series on sugar. But, so what was I doing this weekend? Why we have a special edition weekend? I was hunting. <laughs> and now, it's kind of funny. I just have to say this just because it is hunting weekend. Uh, Miranda did a wonderful post where she took, uh, someone asked me about, you know, what do you think about wild game? Um, it had nothing to do with, with hunting, but uh, as far as this past weekend, so then she put an orange hat on a graphic on there, threw me out there on Instagram. And my, my uh, response to wild game is, I know it's quite interesting, is uh, uh, I may end up uh, hunting and shooting a deer this weekend and or of other wild game. I just don't like to eat it because a lot of those animals just eat a bunch of GMO corn. No joke where I have land out in uh, the area west of here, there's, it's got farmland. There's probably GMO corn sitting on there. Uh, the deer probably eat it. I'm just not gonna eat it. But that's not the point. The point is people lost their minds. I had so many people from Instagram go, I can't believe you hunt. I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted, I'm unfollowing. You know, I'm pretty transparent on everything I do on the show about my life and things like that. that I'm like going, you guys didn't realize a hunter? You know, I, I know that, you know, we try to put great information out there and things of like that. And, and I take, uh, uh, you know, my specialty, uh, taking care of female hormones and stuff of like that. But remember, guys, I grew up up north in the woods. Man, we, we hunted since I was little. I sat in a stand with my dad before I could even shoot a gun. And so it was, it was kind of funny kind of watching responses on there. And I was actually just sitting on, I was looking at Instagram again, and it was interesting because uh, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, definitely go there. It's one of the base platforms that we do have besides if you are on our website. The website is where we have the most people come to. But it was interesting. I mean, all I did was just post on Twitter and then share it on Instagram. And it says, ladies, if you see your man getting lazy and de demotivated, it's an early sign something is going wrong. And then, of course, then the description, uh, testosterone dictates a man's life just like estrogen dictates a woman's life. Don't get mad at your man if he's getting lazy and do more of it. Run for the doctor that uh, tells you testosterone goes uh, down as men get older. When you get him properly tested and qualified doctor, then can get uh, the root, the cause of what's going on that way. Um, man, I didn't realize that women were going to be so mad at me at that post. It's <laughs> Brandon, did you see this one? It says, with, while I love the information shared in the post, I take issue. Everybody has issues. You say it? I take issue with a get your man tested message. Men are responsible for themselves and their own healthcare needs. I would not expect my partner to uh, book a pap test for me. Why is there the expectation that women should take a responsibility of their partner hormone health? This post is poorly worded and sexist. <laughs> but actually, she wouldn't say sexist, but she, spent, she put sexiest. <laughs> so sexist, uh, very disappointing. People just lose their mind. I swear to God. I'm like going, the things that people post are, are kind of funny. And so then it's kind of like when I did the hunting post. Um, this woman actually lost her mind and she said negative things and she chastised me for killing an innocent animal. And I, I'm going to unfollow. It's horrible. I love all your information. I was less. I love all of your information, but you know what I'm saying? And it was really funny. 
So I'm kind of a stalker. I am. So I clicked on her profile. Guess what she was wearing? She was wearing Nike shoes made by six year olds in China with cows. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like going, if you're going to be congruent, be congruent. Do you understand? And I know somebody's going to be offended that I said six year old from China is doing those shoes. Kind of true, they, have, they don't have any child labor laws. Plus, on top of it, it's a cow. And I, I did, couldn't see her other posts because when I just saw Nike shoes, I'm like going, you just slaughtered a cow. Why is if I shoot a deer and you have a cow, it's there? So, anyways, um, welcome to Hunting Edition. <laughs> Different perspective. So, this is kind of neat. So all, we, uh, uh, all the posts, and thank you for always posting. As you guys know, for example, I have my uh, Instagram up here on my computer right now. Uh, as you guys know, I actually respond to probably 90% of it. I can honestly see it. When I was sitting in the, in, the, in the deer stand, I responded honestly to probably 500 plus messages from email and Instagram. Yes, that money over the last couple of days. That's how many we get. Now, the one thing I always want you to do is send me a message. Me and Dr. Devin and some other people respond to it that way. So if you have it, I know you guys are live on Instagram right now, unless it didn't work yet. How are we doing? I am working on it right now. Working on it now. But Definitely this, two seconds here. yes, it's kind of cool. Because before we do our one thing that I want to go over, because even though some people lost their mind when it came to my post on men, obviously, or my post on uh, hunting, there's people out there. Ah, are we on Instagram now live? All right. Hi, all you live on Instagram. I kind of been waiting for you guys and stuff. So uh, we had a little technical difficulty going that way. But what we're going to do is for the people that don't lose their mind and end up searching for our care, I'm going to show you a wonderful video of somebody that doesn't care that I hunt, doesn't care that, uh, that I ask uh, men to get tested. Because watch uh, this wonderful video of an amazing guy that got the greatest clinic results. And that's actually what the Wellness Way is really about. Hello everybody, I am Dr. Mitch Sutton of the Wellness Way Green Bay. Uh, chiropractor here, been here for six years-ish. Um, and we're going to talk about Dan today. Dan first came in, actually he was referred by, uh, by another chiropractor who I was um, actually in communication with and sent him over and it's like, this guy just needs help. Um, he's been dealing with some, some terrible, right, like, Crohn's colitis inflammatory bowel issues and talking through him and with this um, his, his GI doctor like basically they give you you know immune suppressing medication I think he was on Remicade forever and the guy came in and he was he was just frail like he was he was slowly dying and they wrote him off truly but every route that he went to nobody was helping him along his journey because nobody was looking at it the way that he needed it to be looked at. And so that's when he came in. So let's sit back, relax, okay? Have a listen. Dan's got some things that he wants to tell you and listen to his truth. Hello, I'm Daniel Kustuk, and I've been going to the Wellness Way for about a year and a half. I'm a coil winder, so I make electrical transformers for a small company up in Antigo. And uh, I do really like doing it because um, I like the people around me. The job is it's fast paced, it, it's, uh, it, the day goes by really quick. Um, and the, it's just a nice company to work for. And I was really, really thankful that I worked for them during this time because they were working with me for, you know, what I needed to do to get better. They just wanted me to get better just so I could do my job. So I, I really, I appreciate the company I work for, for sure. I was very sick for about a year before I came to the Wellness Way and I was tired all the time. I was in the bathroom constantly. Um, didn't want to eat really, I mean, you have to, but it was a chore. And uh, it was just hard to go to work. And um, especially I have to drive like 45 minutes to work, so that made it even more difficult. And uh, it was just um, miserable. I was in a lot of pain and uh, didn't ever really think I was gonna get a normal life again. So I went to just my regular doctor and they put me on an antibiotic and everything. They thought maybe food poisoning or something. 
And uh, it went on for a couple months because this was during COVID. So a lot of places were shut down or delayed. So when I finally got into my GI doctor, they did the scan and everything that that found out I had uh, moderate to severe pan ulcerative colitis. And uh, they told me the only cure for it, if the biologics didn't help, was to remove my colon. So that was pretty scary. <clears throat> um, they started out putting me on a steroid. I was on a steroid for three months. And uh, I was feeling a little bit better. You know, it kind of got me back on my feet. And then after I was off the steroid, they put me on Humira. And when I was on the Humira, I just, it didn't really do anything for me. I was getting headaches from it. And, um, and back when I was on the steroid too, I was, I uh, broken out in shingles. So I had a side effect. It came on so suddenly that I was like, this is, there's no way that there's not something else going on there. You know, there has to be a, another answer. So um, I was going to a chiropractor near my hometown and um, she happened to know Dr. Mitch and she had told my mom about him. So I decided to call the wellness way and here I am. Meeting Dr. Mitch was, um, it was like a, it was like a breath of fresh air. He was listening to what I was saying a little bit more. He knew I was in a lot of pain. And uh, he, I just felt confident that he was gonna help me right off the bat. And uh, it took a few months at first to really feel the results. But once I did, I was thinking, yeah, this is, this is the way to go. And he was nice. I mean, he, as soon as I walked in, he knew me. He asked me about, you know, stuff that we had talked about last time, even though it had been a few months. So he had remembered me. So that was a pretty good feeling. He knew right off the bat that it was, a lot of it was food related. And they had did a test and found out that I had um, not only some food intolerances, but I had some infections in my stomach as well. So he had put me on um, some supplements to get me feeling stronger again and to kill the um, infections in my stomach basically. So after we found out what was what the intolerances were, he um, just gave me a really good plan of, you know, avoid your intolerances. And then he said, do high fat, low carb. And that helped out a lot. On a Saturday morning, I liked like eggs and toast and bacon. And one of my intolerances was egg whites and egg yolks. So I had to stay away from the bread and I had to stay away from the eggs. So when I had made that transition, I had, uh, there was a lot of things, mainly bread that I had to get rid of. And I thought it was gonna be really difficult. And after about a month, it really wasn't anymore. It was pretty normal. And uh, you know, you, you find out that you can replace things with, you know, there's low carb tortillas that you can look at the ingredients and they don't have the things that you're intolerant to. And it's not a hard transition at all once you get used to it. I didn't necessarily notice, but people around me noticed as my color came back. I wasn't pale. Uh, I didn't look like I was frail anymore. And um, it was longer stretches between me having to go to the bathroom. I had to start going out and doing things. And once I had figured out what foods I could eat, it was easier for me to just decide what I was gonna eat for breakfast, for lunch, for supper. And uh, I kind of plan out my meals for the week at work. And um, I started getting some strength back. I started gaining some weight again. Um, I grew a beard. I couldn't do that for 35 years, so <laughs> that was a pretty big deal for me. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really impressive, actually. I was able to do my job a lot better, a lot of people at work, because it was something where I'd show up and I did the best I could, but it was really difficult to do my work. And they all noticed that. And, you know, they noticed I can eat something at a party now once in a while. And, it's uh, definitely, they, you know, they, they noticed mostly in my appearance that I'm doing better. They noticed I'm gaining weight. That was the last time I saw my uh, aunt who I hadn't seen in probably about three months. The first thing she looked at, when she looked at me, she said, well, I can tell you gained some weight now. So that was nice to hear. Moving forward now, I feel like I can actually enjoy life again, do things. Um, a regular doctor is going to 
give you medication when you're first sick to get you back on your feet. And they tell you that when you come here. You know, they have the fireman and carpenter kind of mentality here, where your regular doctor is the fireman. They put the fire out, whatever the problem is. And then the wellness way is the carpenter. They're gonna rebuild, you know, everything that was tore down. And this is, coming here is definitely worth it if you wanna become the, you know, if you want your body to start working and functioning the way it's supposed to. For the first time in, a, you know, probably since 2020, I feel like I can go back to being, you know, me and doing the things I like to do and, you know, hanging out with my friends and my family and enjoying parties again and being able to go to work and do my work and it just, I feel like I'm me again. Every patient that goes through, right, you have to look at them as an individual because somebody may show up with the same symptoms, right, the same issues, like there may be five people that all are dealing with some sort of inflammatory bowel issue or dealing with hormone imbalance, but the issue is why did that specific health problem happen to them? Where did that inflammation come from? And that's why you have to look at everybody as an individual. And the question is, well, why don't you just actually figure out what's creating that inflammation? And that's what we do at The Wellness Way, right? We look at problems, we look at things differently to solve these issues that other people can't because it's just changing the mindset, right? It's just looking a different way at approaching these underlying chronic health issues that people have. So if you're dealing with any type of inflammatory bowel issue or any other chronic inflammatory issue, give us a call. Find a clinic near you. We are The Wellness Way and we're here to help. You know, watching those stories, they never get old. I've been doing this for a long time, just started my 24th year. Every time I see a testimonial like that, every time I see a patient come to me and say, thank you for what you created, uh, it still gives me chills down my spine because uh, it doesn't matter if you're a new doctor, just came out of school, it doesn't matter if you're one of our academy practitioners, it doesn't mean if you've been a doc, been practicing for 24 years, that stories just are life-changing and they're emotional. Watching that all over again has been nothing but a blessing to see all these people. And I, I it was great because I actually met the guy for the first time and as he got done shooting the video, he came down and it was great to hear his story and, and it was great to shake his hand and see some life back into somebody's eyes. So that being said, like Dr. Mitch said, there is people all over the country that you can see. So don't forget to find a clinic. You can definitely take a look and videos that you can see, go up, click on the top right. Guess what happens? There's places all over the world as it continues to get more and more. Like I said, almost every show, it's like we have some more clinics popping up and you can see just a nice little places everywhere. It's exciting to watch that we have so many offices. But on top of it, like I said, hopefully we'll be in your area sometime soon as we continue to scroll through and actually add more clinics basically every week. It's an exciting thing. So um, yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. So those are, those are great things. Plus, you gotta remember, one of the most important things that you can do to now see these stories, but also find more information. Because people always mess me all the time. You know, Doc, I missed ADP Live or I missed this way. Remember, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. You can see right here, just scroll down to the bottom. You can see our newsletter. It just gives us all the information that we need to know in order to actually do what we need to do. And you're gonna see all the videos and you can see all the things that we have. You can find everything from there from just a great recipe to a video talking about sugar to a video talking about cancer. That's the greatest part, sign up for a newsletter. We don't solicit you or anything. And that's the nice thing is, but we do send out a newsletter now twice a week, which does a phenomenal job, which now, guess what? We get to talk about, once again, is here. The third thing, the third part of the series here, you see the slide that pops up. Sugar, whatever you need to know. And the biggest thing that we're gonna continue on this series is talk about, is sugar bad for you? Is it? And I think we've determined over the last couple weeks, no, it's essential, but there's where, where things that happen. Sometimes it comes in too quickly. Sometimes when skim, you actually eat too much. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move to something that I believe that everybody's been asking me. I've gotten so many emails and, and messages about this. Uh, so let's move into our perspective today. All right, so here we are. A lot of people have been asking me, you know, can we recap, can we do things? Yes, so let's go through something, just a quick recap, because it's gonna go into the things that we need to know, and I believe that you need to know more than anything today. I think third show is always my favorite when you do series three, because remember, sugar itself, sugar itself, oh, here we go. Sugar itself is a general term like estrogen. Remember, there's different forms of sugar. 
But then on top of it, here we go. Let's define it. And I changed it a little bit, put a little color on this slide, as you can see. It's a generic term that describes any of the classes of soluble crystalline, typically, and I put it in red today, sweet tasting carbohydrates attained from plant sources and other living organisms. Now, so what we're going to do today, which, I, which once again, people say, Doc, love the idea of sugar, stuff like that. But I, like you said, you actually have sugar cravings all the time. What are your favorite sweeteners? So what we're going to do now is we're going to just tape my top six favorite sweeteners. Top six. Why? Because there's different flavors. Here. No joke. They're all sugars, but they all taste a little bit differently. And I'm going to go through mine in general. No one skim. These are just things that I like. You know what I'm saying? There can be, you can rearrange these. You could add different ones. I'm just going to tell you my six favorite ones. Now remember, everything that I give you advice on is based of, think of this way. If you're a patient and you had fatty liver or you actually had some uh, diabetes type one or type two or just consuming too much, I'm always going to speak to you like you're a patient. Remember that. People always say, hey doc, why don't you just do a podcast where you can listen? Which we do have one coming out pretty soon, but it won't be me because I am not a podcaster. I get interviewed all the time, and I can honestly tell you, it bores the heck out of me. It really does. Because all you do is just kind of tell a story, tell what happened, tell you know my, you know how I developed all the hormone stuff and things like that. And um, no joke, it's pretty the story over and over again, which I'm cool. I get interviewed every week for it. No joke, Tuesday I got another big interview for another huge podcast. But here's what I do, as I love to teach. I love to give you guys practical things. But I gotta come to you from like, I'm your doc, okay? So if I were sitting across, so imagine, I'm gonna give you some advice on my six favorite sweeteners, like you're sitting across from me as a patient today. So number one, once again, my favorite sweetener by far is number one, monk fruit. Monk fruit. Now, why? Well, here's some of the characteristics I do like about it. It's right here. Here we go. If we think about it, number one, it's safe for diabetics. It really is. That's one of the biggest things we want to do is we want to make sure that the fact that your blood sugar is good and a lot of people do have type 2 diabetes, we want to make sure it's safe for them. It promotes weight loss. But here's the cool thing. If you look, there's characteristics because even the sugars have some characteristics that affect different immune responses. So it does. It relieves sore throat and phlegm. Now, once again, the one thing that I like to do is always post some of the things that show you the research behind it. So if you look at one of the major ingredients in there, so I had to post uh, always the backed research because people say, well, Doc, you know, do you have some of the stuff to back that? Of course I do. Here we go. We talk about it once again. As you can see, traditionally, thousands of years of Chinese been using it, and they found it in drinks. Actually, it was, again, relieves sore throat and reduces the phlegm. There's been significant amount of research talking about this, so I do like it. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the favorite things to do. Also, if you look here, it has some anti-carcinogenic activity. Now, think about that. We're talking about sweetener. We're talking about sugars that actually feed cancers. And then we go from, oh my goodness, it's number one, it stars as uh, something that can help with phlegm, but also help with a, a sore throat. To move the answer carcinogenic. Yeah, if you look, for example, they talk about it. You can see right here. Once again, represents a novel leukemia therapeutic. Oh my goodness. You know, and they keep on talking a little bit more about it. And they also talk once again. You can see here, Brandon will pop up a couple slides in a row here is the pharmaceutical activities. Now, once again, I'm gonna destroy this word because I'm horrible at producer <laughs> saying it. Um, magrocides, once again, are an ingredient within it. Now you can see in the quotes down here, based on the future medicinal chemistry, according to traditional Chinese medicine, once again, has a cooling nature and sweet taste and possesses heat clearing, lung motion, phlegm removing, and other properties. See, they studied these things there, there. And as you can see, it describes a little bit more in the description there. The most uh, interesting characteristic of it is that they are highly sweet and uh, pharmacologically safe. Consider a process, uh, considerable pro uh, progress has recently been made in the determination of the pharmaceutical properties of magrocides. Magrocides have shown definite uh, efficacy as anti-carcinogens, anti-inflammatory agents, free radical scavengers, and glucose and lipid lowering agents. Okay, I want you to think about that. Come back to me on Brandon Wilson. I want you to think about this. So we have a sweetener already that has some other properties besides just, once again, reducing glucose levels. So that's one thing. Remember, these are foods. So that's one thing if you like. The foods, they have other ingredients that really do a wonderful job affecting other parts of the body. That's why, once again, monk fruit seems to be one of my favorite things that are there. What else does it do, as you can see? As you notice also, once again, 150 to 200 times sweeter than regular sugar. It feeds our normal flora. It's very stable under heat. It's more of a flavor enhancer. So remember, you can't use this in big bulk. But here's the major downfall. And here's the major downfall. Here it is. Monk fruit is challenging to grow. 
harvest and dry. It's also expensive to import and uh, process organically. This makes monk fruit sweetener more pricey. All right, so do I get some? Yes, I get a little small container of it. Is it extremely expensive? Yes, it's extremely expensive. So when people say it was my favorite sweetener, I'm gonna tell you from a clinical standpoint, um, from uh, the average American buying it, probably not. Do you say I'm? Because it's dramatically expensive compared to other sweeteners that are very safe and very effective. But once again, there's a significant amount of constituents and ingredients within monk fruit that has more than just a sweeter aspect to it. So that's why I tell people, say, listen, I love it. I think it's an amazing sweetener, but just understand. But you say, but doc, you know, I see monk fruit. Yeah, here's what happens. Once again, monk fruit is, you know, a very really high sprayed process. So that's why it's hard for me to want to do it if it's not organically. Once again, because glycophosphate, once again, is just very toxic. And we're gonna talk about that next week as we could talk more about sweeteners. But the idea is this. So monk fruit is by far clinically one of my favorite things, but do I use it much? Eh, I have it around. I really do. I like to stick more, once again, towards the organic brands. So I do order one online. Uh, I have my favorite one, but as you want to know, there's not that many organic lines of monk fruit, but if you do get it, you can find it, you know, ship it right to your, your house. It's fantastic if you do like clinical benefits and if you can afford it. But I would tell you this, most people cannot because <laughs> I actually think like a little jar of it, I think it's like 50 bucks. Not a joke. It's hugely expensive. Now it's the organic version. So remember that. All right. Number two, here we are. Here it is. Yakum syrup. People are like, what? Now look at it. It looks like a sweet potato, doesn't it? Actually, it, look at the sweet potato. And actually what it does, it comes, if you pour it out in the jar, it looks like good old molasses. Now, once again, because people don't realize, molasses eh, just drives me nuts for the properties it has. It's just highly toxic. So this actually places it. And if you ever, if you ever dip your finger and, and touch, uh, taste it, the Atkins syrup actually tastes a little chocolatey. It really does, so it has a great flavor. And you can see it has wonderful properties. Here are the properties I like about it, okay? Remember we talked about in the first couple of shows, we talked about oligosaccharides, which once again, means it's very long chained and it's very hard to break down. So it actually is like a fiber. Well, that's what it is. See a fructo oligoside and a fiber called inulin. So think about it this way, guys, this sugar is more of a fiber, all right? But it's one that has a sweet taste. See, one of the reasons why they don't classify a lot of oligosaccharides for sugars, as far as like call them a sugar, they call it fiber, is because they don't have much sweet taste. This one <laughs> does both. You basically are using a sweetener that has a fiber. So that's why it's one of my favorites. That's why it's one of the top of the list because it won't affect your blood sugar, but also it's more like a fiber. So it does a wonderful job of having those amazing properties. And here are some of those great properties. It reduces our overall hunger. See, that's one thing. When you do eat fiber, it actually reduces our hunger. It improves your insulin. Can be consumed with blood sugar issues. Uh, use more for flavoring as, once again, if you look at monk fruit and you look at, uh, um, you know, yakin syrup, what happens is they're just used for flavor enhancers. But I will tell you right now that this is one thing that I like to use on a regular basis. I even like to put it in my coffee. I really do. Um, <laughs> okay. If I'm feeling sassy, what I'll do, even though it's all good stuff, what I'll do is, uh, I, you know, I have a, you know, espresso machine here. And what I do is I make some espresso. And what I'll do is I'll throw some coconut milk in there and I'll actually put some yakin syrup. So I got like my kind of mini mocha right there. You guys saying? Uh, no drum. I sometimes throw some chocolate in there too, but yakin syrup kind of gives me that dual flavor that way. Now, does it taste just like chocolate? No, I just think it does. So I actually have a wonderful job of making myself a nice little latte there in the morning if I just want something besides just coffee. So that being said, yakin syrup is by far my second favorite. Number three, number three, here it is. Coconut sugar. Coconut sugar. Now, <laughs> I'm not joking. I had a patient one time that has never opened up a coconut. And so when I showed him that picture, he's like, is that what comes out of coconuts? I'm like, no, there's actually water in there and things like that. So, but it's a cute picture that way. But coconut sugar, once again, has many properties that I do like. Once again, here it is. It's, uh, it's dehydrate sap, making it minimally processed. It's what I like about it. It's just a dehydration process just a dehydration process. So once again, it's not processed much at all. It can be used for cooking and baking. See this, now we start to get in why I like coconut sugar up towards the top is because once again, you can use it more abundant qualities uh, and, and quantities that make it much better for you. Low on the glucose availability. If you remember, we talked about 
That's one thing we talk about, for example, is you can actually have sugar just passes through really quickly and sugars that slow the absorption down. This is one that's very low and it's actually nutrient dense as iron, zinc, potassium, magnesium, calcium. It's good for the heart once again. And also there we go. Fiber. See, if you think about this, you can get sweeteners that not only are fantastic for your taste buds, but actually do great for your body. So that's why I actually like coconut sugar. That's why if you ever notice, I also like coconut flakes. You actually have major benefit from them. All right. Now this one always gets a little bit more controversial with people because you know, people don't understand it that well, but by far honey, honey, don't, people don't realize honey is one of the greatest sweeteners there is. Um, the one thing I do like honey for is allergies. I really do. As you're, as you're talking about, as you saw even from the guy that also have colitis, once again, allergies are something incredible that they notice that they can actually help reduce with honey. Okay. I want you to think about this. They've done this with people that have seasonal pollen and other allergies on the outside. One of the best things that you can do is actually go to a local in your area, beekeeper and get the local honey by that being digested by the bee. Now it's really funny. People don't realize the bee does this. The bee consumes it and then brings it back up once again, because I know I've heard people say that it's bee poop. That's not true. It's, it's actually bee puke. Okay. Cause they eat it and then regurgitate and that's where it comes from that way as a separate sack in its body for that way. But really what it does is this is as they're going around and creating again, come in contact with all the pollens and everything like that, the bodies, the bees actually producing enzymes that ends up in the honey that we get. So what it does, it introduces the different pollens and things to our, to our system. And as we eat honey, we can actually get the local areas, which now builds our immune response because we all have the enzymes in it. Honey itself, I always look at honey as very simple. I just look at it as a little glob of enzymes. I really do. And the great thing is if you get it locally from your area, you can actually have less chance of having seasonal allergies in there. So I've done this with many patients. Uh, once again, I said, no, they, now remember, don't run to the store and buy the bear. <laughs> what is that thing? Just process then? No, no, you want to go to something that's local. You'll always find some local honey. Uh, and I actually have some videos on there. Why well, went right to a bee farm. And what they do is once again, get it. You're going to have a wonderful job actually getting all the environmental things around it. So I do love honey that way. But once again, honey has wonderful properties that you can see here. Here they are. Okay. Once again, allergy reduction, good for sore throats. Okay. Reduces dry cough. Okay. Let's stop right there for a second. Literally, literally, this is not a joke. Um, obviously once again, people will have some dry coughs and everything. I'll say, listen, go into the kitchen, grab some of our local honey, put it in a spoon, put it in your mouth, but guess what? Swallow it. I said, hold it in your mouth for a little bit that way, let it warm up and then swallow it. It does a really good job of actually stopping people from having a dry cough. I do it with my daughters. I do it with my, my patients. I do it with actually all the staff here too. If I hear them barking a little bit that way, because we're all going to come in contact with things that give us a little dry cough. So it actually reduces some of it. Okay. Let's look at their properties that we have here. All right good on wounds and cuts. And that's because all the enzymes has hydrogen peroxide and affects E. Coli and H. Pylori. It's great for stomach infections, protects the brain against lead. People do not realize that. All right. That's one property that I absolutely love about. It. It's a whole superfood. You know, I've, I've always told people, if you want to look at the history of nutrition, we are always looking for superfoods that people have actually said, okay, listen, there's this berry in the cane fields of India that guess what just popped up and it's going to save the world. Or there's something we found in Brazil and all of a sudden guess what happens? Oh my goodness. This is the ultimate superfood. Uh, 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 I will tell you right now, the two superfoods that have crossed every generation across every, every country for thousands of years is organ meats and honey that they used to actually put, they still do. If you go into ancient nutrition, they still used to put honey on organ meats to make it tolerable to even taste good. It's not a joke. So you want to talk about something that's amazing when you actually can consume things like organ meats with honey. Guess what? Massive properties that are incredible for you. All right. Like I said, I want to give, go a little bit more controversial because I know everybody freaked out on Instagram. That's why I wanted to wait for Instagram when I actually, I, uh, um, posted about hunting, but now we're going to get into the other people that are going to freak out when I actually, if you want to know, but this way, probably the one I consume the most is next. And I actually love it. Now, once again, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a prelude because here's what's going to happen. All of you dog lovers are going to freak out 
trust me, I'm going to say it right away because every time I talk about xylitol, anytime I talk about xylitol, some dog lover gets on there and says, you, know you don't want to have xylitol if there's, there's a dog in the house. I understand that. It can be toxic for some dogs, not all dogs. There's dogs that ate xylitol like crazy, which do not let them, okay? But the idea is this. This has happened. This has really happened. I've had patients make um, um, cookies with xylitol that way, and the dog ate it. Just jump up, grab the cookies, and next thing you know, um, the dog just got really bad diarrhea. Now, once again, so I would tell you this. If you have a dog, keep them away from the xylitol because you don't know if it would be fatal for your dog. I personally, I personally, I'm not saying that hasn't happened. I personally haven't heard any dog die on a xylitol. I'm not saying they can't because they've known that they can. I've had patients where their dog has eaten it and they didn't kill over and die. They just think that if they eat a cookie that was made from that way, they're going to deal. Now, once again, be safe. Don't, don't leave your food out when you got a dog that way. And once again, if you just are not comfortable with it, don't have xylitol in your house. All right? I hope I'm clear with that. So because a lot of people think because uh, um, I say xylitol that people are going to freak out because they have dogs. Just be safer with that way. But and one thing why I like xylitol is because it has so many clinical properties. See, once again, why do I talk about it? Once again, even though I can have a property that would be a little more fatal for a dog. I'm sorry. All right, time for the dog lovers to get, get a little crazy. Um, I can honestly tell you, it's a dog, okay? And so what I'm going to do is this. I'm an animal lover. I love animals. I really do. I think boxers are the greatest dogs on the planet, just as me, all right? I love boxers. I love uh, my, my sister has them. We had them our whole life that way. Absolutely love that. So let me make that very clear. But here's what happens. One of the major chronic things that children deal with is chronic ear infections. And xylitol has a factor on this. Now people always say, well, doc, what about the other sugar alcohols like erythritol? I'm a fan of it. I am. Except for what you gotta watch out for, here's what happens. Erythritol is made a lot from GMO corn. So if, you, if you're gonna get some erythritol, make sure that you have corn. And actually the, the corn that's non-GMO. But you gotta remember, erythritol is the number one sugar alcohol that has a lot of GI disruption. Now on the flip side, if you do have xylitol, let's go in a little detail some of the things that are printed about xylitol. Let's take a look. And we seek them here. Oh, gotta go a little bit, step here. Okay, here we go. Xylitol itself, okay, we're gonna talk about this. I love this. It's naturally occurring alcohol found in most plant material, including many fruits and vegetables. It's extracted from birch to make what? Please look at that. Please look at this. This is just WebMD. It's extracted from birch to make medicine. So I'm sorry. I love dogs, but I'd rather go down to the bottom and take a look. Xylitol tastes sweet, but unlike sugar, it is converted in the mouth to acids that cause tooth decay. It's not. It reduces levels of uh, decaying, causing bacteria in saliva, and also, here we go, acts against some bacteria that cause ear infections. And if you look all the stuff that they talk about when it comes to xylitol, and once again, reduces the effect of ear infections in pre school kids. I'll talk about appropriate doses after meals to preschool kids seems to significantly reduce the number of ear infections they get and they need for antibiotics. However, given the Zaltol onset symptoms, the acute respiratory infection does not seem to prevent ear infections. Okay, great. So what they meant is if you have a major infection, you got an ear infection from it that way, it doesn't. But ear infection alone is significant. So I want you guys to remember that. So I love your dog. I do. But if I had a child with an ear infection and I had a dog, I'm getting rid of the dog. You know what I'm saying? Because you know why? Sorry, the child's more important. So therefore, guess what? I want people to understand that xylitol has major properties like that. My kids have had xylitol since they were little and stuff. So it's a wonderful thing that not only can be used for a sweetener, but I love how they talk about it. The birch bark, once again, actually does what? It's actually used for a medicine. So I want to think about that. There's a lot of barks out there that are used for medicine. Okay, that's why if you look, um, if you look at uh, um, how they got aspirin, does anybody know what bark that they use to actually create aspirin? Willow bark. Okay, that's why, once again, you notice that aspirin was, was actually taken from that. They took, they took willow bark, they actually had some chlorine, had some chemical, and actually that's how they got aspirin. So you look at the history of it. See, barks have amazing properties for our immune responses. That's why if you ever know this, let's go into it. Does anybody want to know one of the major medicinal things that grows from trees off the bark that has wonderful properties, including cancer properties? Medicinal mushrooms. Majority of your great medicinal mushrooms grow from the barks of tree. That's why I love shaga. If you ever look at shaga, it looks like a big old fungus on a birch bark. Imagine that, hey? And therefore, the major properties that, ha that has medicinally 
It's incredible for you. So that's why when you kind of eat a birch bark that way, now you get a great sweetener, but there's a major immune effect. So think about it this way. I want you to think about it. That's why I love it the most. You can eat a sweet that's great for your immune response. Because I taught you in the beginning of shows, and we'll talk about it next week, how our world eats sugar that just damages our immune response. Damage it, and we're seeing it even more today as we see the things that go on. All right, next one. Number six and final one that I will talk about tonight is actually stevia, okay? Stevia is an incredible sweetener. Now, once again, as you can see here, there's some properties about it that I want you guys to see. Safe for diabetics, it's 200 times sweeter than sugar. Guess what? They have documented evidence of tox helps lower blood pressure. But this was the one that really blew my mind away, which we knew because these studies come out all the time that way. Kills, killed off Lyme disease. Oh, I forgot that I put of. Kills off, killed off Lyme disease in test tubes. So they actually tested it within test tubes, has not been done in humans, and they noticed that it killed Lyme disease. So that's why a lot of people that I tell people if you've been diagnosed with Lyme disease, start you know, consuming stevia on a daily basis. It seems to have a very positive effect. Now once again, they have not done any clinical trials when it came to people. Everything has been in test tubes. I don't know why they haven't tried it in uh, test tubes. Well, I think, they, <laughs> I think the reason why they haven't done it in human, because if something as simple as stevia could actually have a major effect on it, it would be quite crazy. So Brandon, come back to me on this one. So those are great properties that you can see there. But I was actually blown away, and like I said, I, I'll post the link below when it talks about that. But see, when I'm sitting across from you clinically, I would say, listen, got Lyme disease, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take some plants, a sweetener you're gonna use because you're gonna want a sweet. And on top of it, you don't wanna feed bacteria with a bad sweet that can actually cause an overgrowth of certain bacteria. So use xylitol, use stevia, use monk fruit, use the ones that are gonna actually reduce the amount of clinical things that you're gonna go through and suffer. So remember, are there more sweeteners than that? Yes. Are there more than I like than that? Yes. I'm just going to give you the top six that I believe that if you were clinically sitting across from me, that I can give you great advice that now you can actually have all the clinical results that you want just by starting to avoid the certain sweeteners. So is there more? Because <laughs> I know I'm going to get messages. Yes, there is. I actually have about 10. I think on my website, I have about 10 or 11 sweeteners that I enjoy and that I like. Uh, but I can honestly tell you, by far, I consume Xylitol the most. Now, a lot of people say, Doc, I actually did Zaltol and I got diarrhea. Yes, you got diarrhea, it shows that you have an overgrowth, all right? So then people will talk about, well, what can we do? And I notice the fact that you're gonna have some issues and we're gonna talk about that when we go into our product knowledge. So let's do this, Brandon. Let's move into our product knowledge segment. All right, all these sugar alcohols, all the sugars that we have, once again, what we're trying to do the most is reduce our bacteria. That's one of the greatest things that we can do to actually keep things normal because one of the major things that are, are common today is SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We have a lot of overgrowth, but I want to teach you something very simple that can really help that dramatically. It really can. I literally had somebody Instagram me, a student down at Life, and uh, uh, Annalise, thank you for, for sending me a message. She's like, oh my goodness, Doc, I gave this person this one word of advice and what it did, it not only changed her SIBO, but it changed other things that were going on with her, even changed her skin just from one thing. And the one thing that she did is she gave that person, told them to take, was apple cider vinegar. Now, what did apple cider vinegar do? Well, here's what happens. The one thing that I believe that both men and women suffer from dramatically, it's something called hypochlorhydria. Why is that so important? Because a lot of people don't realize. People, when I ask, and, well, let's do this in general. Okay, let's do this in general. If I were to ask you what the main job of the stomach is, the majority of people say to digest food. Well, actually, believe it or not, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. Because you don't need the, the uh, stomach to digest sugars, and you don't need it for fats. That happens with our gallbladder and bile. So the main job of actually the stomach is to digest proteins. No, that's the second job. But what it, number one job it does is sterilizes every food that goes in there. Because think about this way. If you think about how many things that are touching what's going on, the foods we eat and stuff like that, guess what happens in there? Our fingers and everything that we do, there's a ton of, there's a petri dish of things that you eat and you didn't even want that. They're just joining the ride of actually being on the food and coming down, even if it's cooked. So the stomach does this. Yes, does the stomach use to digest all of our proteins if we eat meat and everything? Absolutely. But the one thing it does more than anything is sterilize, is sterilize. That's why if you ever notice PPIs, protein pump inhibitors, one of the major side effects of them is what? Is infections. How's that possible? Well, what doesn't give you an infection it reduces the amount of stomach acid, so now things that are passing in the stomach that are supposed to be sterilized aren't. You see, yes, it creates other undigested things, but guess what happens? It's a main job is sterilization. 
So the one thing that I want to talk to you guys about, which is so key for the whole digestive system going down, is something we just call right here. It's called, oops, here we go. It's called digest well, all right? Now, once again, if you look, it's actually good for blood sugars. Why? Because what it does, it actually has apple cider vinegar and betaine hydrochloride in there. See, a lot of people lack massive stomach acid. So I took apple cider vinegar and I took betaine hydrochloride and put it into a capsule form and actually to a great organic form to actually be taken and actually digested. Well, that's why it says you digest well. Okay, Brian, I come back. So it's very important for people to have this because what it does, stomach acid, not only as you can see, has a major microbial effect, but also has a digestive effect and also has a blood sugar regulation. And the nice thing about the acetic acid that exists in, once again, apple cider vinegar is great for blood sugar regulation. And that's one thing that I want to talk about when we talk about blood sugar, got to have certain ingredients to make sure that we can normalize these things, make sure that we don't actually have infections going on. And on top of it, when we do acidify the stomach, we now do what? We reduce the amount of bacteria that can create overgrowth that now ferment things. And when you ferment things, what do you produce? Alcohol and sugar. See, they did some pretty cool studies, even though I've been screaming this since 2003. If you think about it, if you actually look at the children that suffer on the autism spectrum, they have a lot of bacterial, they have a lot of microbial, they have a lot of overgrowth. They do. Well, how do you produce alcohol? There's a sugar and there's bacteria. And once again, they come together and it ferments and you get alcohol. If you ever notice, children on the spectrum actually have that effect with what goes in their brain. They've even studied it and they've actually found trace amounts of alcohol within their system that relates to some of the behavioral things that go on with them and some of that dead stare and everything like that. See, that's why we gotta be careful when we actually have those major overgrowths because now it can affect our sugar levels, but it also affect other parts of our body that are significant that way. So I wanted people to understand a little bit about digest well because it's so important to do our stomach. You know why? Because here's what happens. You know, when I always talk about female hormones and male hormones, a guy is actually increases testosterone when he has physical or mental stress. A woman's depleted. Second of all, but here's what happens. Here's, the, here's a very synergistic relationship between men and women when it comes to one function of the body. When a male or a female's stressed out mentally, both of their stomachs start to slow down and the amount of hydrochloric acid produced is dramatically reduced. That's why, once again, you've heard the old adage, don't eat and then go for a swim. Why? Because you put your body into a, a fight or flight anabolic state. Once again, digestion slows down. So under stress, both male and females, hydrochloric acid reduces. So that sets up people for problems. I think that's why, once again, I think I love apple cider vinegar so much. I've said it before, out of every herb, of every sweetener, of everything clinically I give, I can honestly tell you, number one by far product there is on the plant that I love is apple cider vinegar. You don't have to buy digestible to get apple cider vinegar. You should just take it daily, go to the store. I have no, I have no ties to this company. I like Dr. Briggs's apple cider vinegar take a shot before each meal, you will actually see dramatic change in your health just from that simple. And when that student gave the other person that had different skin issues and other bacterial overgrowth, just that, it changed her dramatically, just from something that simple. And the nice thing I love about apple cider vinegar, it's dirt cheap, it really is. It's a clinical thing that is dirt cheap. So, that being said guys, a couple things going on in the public that I want you guys to know, so let's move into our last 10%. All right. Last 10%, you can see it all over the news. People are going absolutely crazy and bonkers over it. If you notice right now, a big topic, and so once again, just like what happened over the last three years, uh, people are noticing and saying, listen, oh my goodness, all of a sudden we have this infection that has been around for the existence of time, and all of a sudden, now we have to uh, worry about it that way, even though it cycles through with everybody. And once again, all four of my daughters got it, I've had it, um, everybody, uh, Chrissy's had it, uh, my friends had it, Brand had it as a little boy, and some of that, and we're talking about RSV. Right now, if you look, people are freaking out about it that way like crazy, and they are begging, you know what I'm saying? It's not really true, they're not begging, but they, they want, because they, all they have is certain treatments for it, just to deal with the after effects of that, but now they're begging them to produce a what? Yeah, you know, the good old V word. Okay, which we call popcorn on here so we don't get kicked off again. <laughs> but the idea is this, is what they're doing is this, they have to create this treatment, but you know something? Let's just pull up a little bit of information about this, and I'm just pulling up Mayo Clinic and everything here, but let's take a look and see what it says about RSV, okay? If you look, it causes infections of the lungs and respiratory tract. It's so common that most children have been infected with the virus by age of two. Okay, let's go there. It's, you see it again? 
It's so common. Yes, everybody's going to get it. Respiratory uh, syndicate virus can also infect adults. In adults and, uh, and older, healthy children, RSV symptoms are mild and typically mimic a common cold. Self-care measures are usually at all, that's all needed to uh, relieve any discomfort. All right, no, Brandon, let's stay up there for a second. Let's read it again on the second thing. In adults and only healthy children, um, RSV symptoms are mild and typically mimic the common cold. I wanna say this again. If you look, it's like an ear virus. The people that are affected are sick, are sick, okay? Let's go on, let's take a look. Let's look at some of the symptoms, all right? Here we go. Congested runny nose, cough, low fever, sore throat, sneezy, headache, common cold. Severe fever, severe cough, wheeziness, rapid breathing, bluish color because you lack oxygen. If we look though, let's take a look. Oh my goodness, we need to do this. RSV, cold and flu push hospitals to the brink and it may get worse. Hold the phone, keep it up there, Brandon. Uh, let's go right here again, you know, if we look here, if you look away, Mayo Clinic talks about it. Respiratory RSV causes infections of the lungs and respiratory tract. It's so common that most children get by a time or two. Um, viruses can also infect adults. Healthy children, RSV symptoms are mild and typically mimic common cold. But then all of a sudden, if you notice, and I'm not saying this is not true here, but here's what I want to tell you. Washington Post, all those people that are filling up the hospitals, Guess what happens? Young or old or actually my age, guess what happens? They're sick, they're weak, they're immunocompromised. And all the doctors that are gonna run for the cure like they did for Pfizer, Moderna, and all those places that the last respiratory virus that we dealt with. To kinda see this plane over and over again. See, you don't even have to talk about what kind of virus it is. Viruses are affect sick people. If your child or you are severely end up in the hospital this way, guess what happens? I hope you take some medication, help you survive, great. But if you go back to the same lifestyle, the same habits, but here's the biggest threat to your health, the same doctor and healthcare system that led you to be sick in the first place. Go back to all my videos <laughs> that weren't censored. You're just gonna, or you're gonna be over and over and over again. So sounds kind of familiar, isn't it? Because like I said, the next virus that comes along, and they talk about this way, there's a problem, there's a problem. You need to do the things to support your immune system. And I can honestly tell you, right now, here's what I take. Honestly, look at it, it's called immune glandular. What is it? I'm gonna look at the back of this, and I'm gonna talk about this for two things. There's actually spleen, liver, and thymus. Okay, now if you think about this, people always say, and I get this question all the time, Doc, what should I give my child for a multivitamin? Right there. Do you understand? I watch all these multivitamins for kids, which once again, I just had somebody send me one on Instagram. Thank you for all the messages. I appreciate it that way. But I'm not joking. I'm sorry, I'm gonna pull it up. I literally was waiting for the show and I was answering questions and then all of a sudden, not a joke. I was looking at this. There was a, there was a product that came up and I'm not kidding, all right? And they talk about all this, this, they talk about all the, the things, and guess what the first bunch of ingredients were? Sugar, 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 sugar. It was pure sugar. And, and not the sugar, not good sweeteners that are actually good for, it's actually sugars that will lower your immune response, that will compete with vitamin C. I was like, <laughs> you know, and who are the experts? I love this one. And I love how they say, it's kind of funny, they had to put this on there. You know, our scientific advisor, somebody from Harvard. Okay, great. Well, the scientific uh, uh, advisors from Harvard is giving out more sugar. And that's why I kind of look and they talk about the, the, the vitamins and supplement facts. And then just talking about, once again, first, first, ingre first ingredient, tapioca syrup, just high in glucose. I was like, wow, there we go. It's gonna affect, reduce the amount of vitamin C that gets into our cell by a gluten receptor. And then guess what? Guess the next one is cane sugar, okay? Another sugar. I was like, wow, those are some of the top ingredients. And that's why they even list right at the beginning, uh, sugars added two grams of sugar. <laughs> but don't worry, it's organic. Well, guess what happens? You're organically gonna compromise your system that way. So as I look at all these things, I want you guys to take a look. Let's take a look what the thymus really is. Here we go, Cleveland Clinic. 
Your thymus is a small gland in the lymphatic system that makes and trains, ooh, there we go, specialized white blood cells called T cells, Mr. Pac Man's. These T cells help your immune system fight disease and infections. Your thymus gland produces most of your T cells before birth. The rest are made in childhood and you'll have all the T cells you need for life by the time you hit puberty. Now, once again, that's why we talk about these young children and everything thing. We have our thymus gland that matures and develops as we are young, and then you want to constantly feed it that way. Because they always say, well, doc, you know, your thymus gland as you get older shrinks. Well, of course it does. Do you know why it shrinks? Because you don't know how to take care of it. It's like when people say, well, doc, testosterone drops down as you get older. Really? Because the last time I checked, mine's at 851. Okay? So what happens to this? If you don't know how to take care of it, it's going to end up that way. Now, I always like to post some great research about this. As you can see, thymus activity measured in T cell receptor circles in patients with different severities of RSV infections. Now you can read the research that way. And what I want to show you is this. If your T cells are low, you're in trouble. Once again, because you know why? If you have a lowered immune system, that's why it's so important to get your immune panel done to see where your cells are at because you're going to get in trouble if you have a compromised immune system. So that's why as they always are running around and they're scared of a virus, which as you can see even from Mayo Clinic's website, it's just like the common cold, but nothing is a common cold if you're immunocompromised. And the number one thing, quote me on this, quote me on this, the number one thing leading you to be immunocompromised is the current healthcare system and your pediatricians and your general practitioners and all of your doctors that are clueless on even how to take care of the immune system, period. That's the number one detrimental thing to human health, right there, is the thinking. As you saw from the guy's testimony, if you think about it, think about the analogy he talked about. He was ingrained with it. He talked about the fire department and carpenter. So right now, if you're watching this sitting in a hospital bed and you survived it and you're an adult or a child, guess what happens if all you do is listen to that professional and go to the world again just because they saved something? I'm happy they saved your life. I really am. That's what they should do. But the idea is this. The same procedures and thinking that saves your life cannot build a strong house. And you're just going to go out and there's going to be another virus that comes out and another one. And you're going to end up back where you are because we're getting more compromised. And here what happens is this. We're doing more sugar. Our diets are getting worse. We're doing more treatments on people. We're doing more things that compromise the immune system ever in history. And we need to change that thinking. So... Huh. Next week, next week I'm going to cover a little bit more. We got our last week of sugar, but I'm going to cover some things on how it affects and some of the things about processed sugar. Because I don't like to talk much about processed sugar besides don't eat it, but I want to really show you what it does to your body. And, it, and believe it or not, I'm going to show you what, a sh what one soda, what it can do, because it will wipe out your immune response for a certain amount of hours, which leaves you susceptible. So that's why, once again, the question is that if a child or even an adult you sit there and go, you know, what's the consumption of sugar, which is the number one sugar consumption that we do in the U.S. today. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for you loyal people that watch our show every single week. And oh my goodness, and I did it under an hour. I was hoping to do this within an hour with all the things that we had going on. So, all right, guys, my name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Thank you so much for watching A Different Perspective. I will see you next Saturday at 8 a.m. Central um, here in the studio. You guys have a great night. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Each week on A Different Perspective, we bring you the most cutting edge information on health you won't find anywhere else. For more information on this topic, please visit our website. A Different Perspective offers life-changing information and resources to share and explore. A Different Perspective is leading a health revolution.